Hello everybody and welcome back. It is fantastic to talk to all of you again today and today we are taking a look at this work in progress tier 10 Soviet battleship the Pabita. This is a work in progress ship so that means anything that I talk about today can and potentially will change by the time this ship makes it onto the live servers and I seriously think that something will change by the time she does because in her present state she is pretty darn incredible. So what I'll do is I'll look over the ship from a port view and then I will of course show you uh, the ship in battle. I don't know what's going on with my port. It is starting to uh, do some weird little hiccups so I do apologize for that. Alright, so let's take a look at the ship and first things first, let's take a look at our armor layout. Now, unlike the uh, uh, Kreml, the Pabita has, well, let's say certain weaknesses. Mostly this upper deck piece here that is only 32 millimeters. Kreml has a lot better deck armor. Pabita does still have the relatively nice 150mm upper belt and of course her actual belt armor is relatively thick at 430mm. If you are angled and staying at range, this ship is pretty tough and not easy to crack. And uh, well, staying at range is what you're going to be doing with the ship a lot. Anyhow, looking at the undersides of the ship, uh, underneath it, there you go, you'll notice that the Citadel is above the water, so yes, she is vulnerable to that, however, that is obviously going to happen if you're a lot closer up. She has only 29% torpedo damage reduction, so that is not as good as Kreml, which has quite a bit more, but again, at the range that you're going to be playing the Pabita, yeah, 29% doesn't really matter. 91,800 HP, again, with the range that you're going to be staying at with this ship and hitting your opponents, yeah, um, durability is not really the biggest issue that you're going to have. So what makes her special? Well, what makes her special are the guns and the dispersion ellipse, which, well, take a look at them. First things first, 24.7 kilometer range. 203 meter dispersion. This ship is one where the further out you go, um, well, your dispersion is actually quite good. In fact, if you're really close, your dispersion is kind of wild, but out in the far distance, your dispersion is really amazing. You do very, very good damage with your shells, 13,450 AP shell damage. Very fast shells, by the way. Um, good velocity, but what makes them you know, have the ballistics that they do is because you have super, super, super low air drag to the best of my knowledge right now. Um, just, you'll see them in battle. You understand what I mean? 24 kilometer range, your shells will get there in like 12-ish seconds. So absolutely phenomenal. Uh, secondary armament, well, again, you're mostly going to be staying at range. So secondaries don't really use them all that much. A defense, I want to talk about them, but at the same time with the game in her present state, um, it's kind of hard to talk about them because potentially the mechanics and things like that will just change at any real time. So, I mean, her AA is actually pretty good. So let's just leave it at that. Um, they are effective. They will bring down some airplanes. And again, at the range that you're going to be at, a lot of CVs just aren't really going to come for you. And even if they do, they're going to take some losses. Maximum speed, 31 knots, and this is, of course, with a speed flag equipped, so she's not a slow battleship by any stretch of the imagination. Turning circle radius, of course, is not very good, obviously, 1,090 meters, so she is going to take a little while to get herself turned around. Rudder shift time, pretty good, at 13.1. <laughs> Surface concealment, 13.2. Again, considering the range that you're going to be fighting with the ship, which is usually like 18, 19, 20, somewhat kilometers, even further out, this is some phenomenal concealment, so she is a very, very stealthy ship. In terms of her modules, well, what you'll probably take is main battery mod 3 just because of the reload speed, although if you really want to try the range mod to increase it even more, you could, but I would just say stick with the uh, rate of fire. Then you'd probably go for concealment, go for rudder shift, go for additional aiming systems, which is uh, accuracy, and then you want to go for damage control, and then of course finally main armaments mod 1. In terms of your captain skills, you're going to run a very standard battleship captain, which is going to be priority target, adrenaline rush, superintendent, uh, concealment expert, fire prevention, basic survivability, and then expert marksman. That's pretty much everything that you're going to talk about for this ship in port, because Seriously, nothing is going to demonstrate this ship better than actual battle footage. So here we go. Let's take a look at the battle, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so here we go. Sleeping Giant map, and I spawn in the center with Pabeda. 
heading towards the a cap and you can see on the mini map where my max range is already 24.7 i already cover all the way to the opposing team's cap and pretty much the minute something comes into range with Pabita, you can start engaging because her dispersion over range is phenomenal. There's a Republic, 24 point something. Look at the shell travel speed, right? Like 12.6, 12.7 seconds. Shells get there in a real hurry. And, you know, when your shells do get there, they have really good penetration still. In fact, if you look at the penetration tables for the Pabita, She's pretty much got like the best penetration downrange of any ship in the game right now. So there is a Republic. Let's take a look at the shell travel speeds and look at that nicely packed little group of shells heading downrange already. And most enemy ships, when you're engaging them at this kind of distance, really not expecting it, right? And because nobody really expects you to be shooting at that kind of distance with not the most amount of reaction time shall we say and you can see the republics are oh, okay well i took 11k damage like right there managed to get a return salvo but i'm already able to get into a nicely angled position with pabita the whole map becomes an engagement ground for you pretty much right um okay i slightly exaggerated that but you get what i mean <laughs> your your range is phenomenal and all of the range that you have is an engagement range for Pabita. This is not true for some of the other battleships that have the range because, you know, their shells are too slow or whatever. They they don't really engage. But with this ship, yeah, like longer range, perfect, right? In fact, your dispersion down range is so good and your shells travel pretty darn fast that you can engage even things that you would never normally engage in a battleship at longer range. So for example, destroyers, yeah, you can engage them because for normal battleships, let's say you want to engage at a distance that you can say, okay, my shell travel time is going to be reasonable. Pepita, yeah, those shell travel times for quote-unquote reasonable is, you know, at still quite a big amount of range. And destroyers don't really expect you to shoot at them. I mean, I've been able to nail like Harugamos, Habarovsks down at like 17, 18 kilometers, and they're not ready for it. And they will eat those big damaging salvos. Anyways, enemy team actually also in this game has a Pavita, which does of course make things a little bit interesting if you're playing the ship as well, because now you have two ships that can both really kind of hurt each other, and they both have that phenomenal shell travel speed and dispersion. Pavita is, realistically speaking, unlike anything else in the game, I think maybe the closest comparison would be like Stalingrad maybe, is probably as close to a comparison as you're going to get. Now, this particular ship, as you've probably already guessed, you're mostly going to be staying back and you're going to be doing a bit more of sniping. You're not really going to push as hard. And so it kind of has to require your abilities to at least aim and lead targets correctly. So there is a bit of a skill element to this. I would say if there's uh, really bad players out there who are really bad at like leading, then they're probably not going to enjoy the ship as much. Although, I mean, yeah, that shell travel speed, right? Like once you get used to it, it is something else. I'll tell you, like once I got used to playing this ship and then I went to play like a normal battleship, suddenly I felt like I couldn't aim anymore. I'm like, why are these guns so terrible? And then I was like, oh, yeah, right. I got spoiled by this darn thing, right? So um, it definitely has that effect. Now, if you're actually a good player, let's say you're like, and the higher win rates, higher skill players, then this ship is crazy dominant. I would say that out of all the battles I've had, I've had multiple, multiple, multiple battles in the high 100k range, like we're talking like 180, 190. I've had games in the 200s. Games in the 300s, I think, are entirely possible without any real challenges, assuming that the enemy team allows you to get those kinds of shots in on them. And um, again, you know, different kind of games you occasionally have different things happen but um the worst games i've had in this game i've had two of them that i thought were really bad and in the two really bad games in one game i did 134,000, and then the other one i did like about 130 as well and in those two instances uh one battle we lost two of our destroyers at the beginning of the game they just got, they just ate a random torpedo and died, and our CV went AFK. That was one of them. And then the other one, I didn't do a lot of damage because 
I was holding an entire flank by myself. Managed to tank like 3.4, 3.5 million damage, which does go to show you that if necessary, she can be tanky, right? And those were two games where my damage numbers were still really good, even though compared to what is normal, not so much. This particular battle that I'm showing you is actually not one of those like highest damage games that I've actually managed to get. This one mostly I'm showing you because in this one I actually closed the range once because at the time I was playing this one I was still pretty inexperienced with the ship. So I tried to close the distance to see what would happen thinking that hey if I get close and the dispersion is just good at range maybe up close it'll be even better. And you'll see I kind of learned my lesson real quick there. Alright, so here enemy uh, Kronstadt is actually maneuvering a little bit, so, you know, sometimes you do have to factor in the potential maneuvers that they can do at long range, factor those in, and you can land pretty good hits. Oh, and yeah, there's like one or two moments in here that really define the ship, and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's going to be like, if you look at the map right now, you'll notice the enemy team is like pushing really, really, really hard down the other flank, right? And you'll notice that the only remaining ship we have really over there is like, uh, one ship that's already in trouble, I think that's a Seattle, and we have a carrier, and like, that's it. <laughs> so once that Seattle goes down, um, well, there's a carrier, and it's going to get feasted upon by the entire enemy team. And you can see from where my position is, normally, if you're playing a normal battleship, to try to lend assistance to that side is really difficult. Like, right now, I'd be having to turn in here, try to really aggressively push through A and then try to lend assistance. But with this ship, when I was playing this battle, I was like, you know what? I'm not really in a rush to go assist that flank. I'll just kind of move my way up here slowly, engage some targets on my way up, and then I'll eventually, you know, get closer so that my guns are in range and I'll start assisting. You'll see the effects that this ship has. Okay, continue to engage the Kronstadt. By the way, this is not, like I said, the best battle. Um, as you can tell, by like 12 minutes, I'm still only on 50k damage. There are other games where by this point in time, I'm already way into the 100ks, uh, just because of how she is. This is a pretty crazy ship, and the majority of her craziness is in these guns. And you'll see. You'll, you'll see the, the effects of these guns really, really soon. Other things that, you know, I, I will say is that well, like I mentioned earlier, she has weaknesses in terms of torpedo protection and things like that. You're never the frontline battleship with Pavita. You're always way like further out in the back. In fact, I think the only torpedoes that ever really threatened me when I was playing the ship is like Shima 20k torps. And assuming that you've got teammates in front of you, well, you will see those torps from a very, very far distance away. Oh, yeah. So think about this. Imagine you were playing that Des Moines over there. You're 25 kilometers away from me, right? I'm so far away from you. You'd never expect me to actively shoot you and actively be able to hit you at this kind of range. Your primary worry are the battleships that are inside the ACAP, but of course, ACAP being the way it is, you know, like their kind of firing arcs are kind of blocked by these islands and stuff like that. So you're pretty safe, right? Or so you would think. So my first salvo not the best salvo, right? I'm like not fully timing my shots and ranging them correctly. So, hey, you see some shells splash nearby, but you're still not thinking it's coming from me. You're thinking, hey, maybe it's one of these other battleships, maybe the Stalingrad or something, you know, got a shot over or something like that, right? So not really thinking that I'm the threat. And then watch this. <laughs> Just watch this, because I'm trying to save the carrier, right? Because this carrier's in trouble. Look at the carrier. Look at where he is. He's being chased down. And this Des Moines can really hurt him. And here comes... Bang, quadruple citadel, instant nuke from 24 point something kilometers. It is a range that so many players will get caught off guard by, right? Okay, so you can see uh, there is the Seattle. I think the Seattle is going to die to someone else. Okay, there's a Montana, also 20 something, 24.3 kilometers away at the time from me. And I'm happy to engage him. I'm actually happy to pick this fight. And once again, like I said, this is one of the very, very early games I played. I did not get the best lead in here at all. There's a lot of things that I ended up getting better at um, as I was playing the ship. But this is one of the early games. Still learning things. And you'll see, I will eventually make 
one really serious mistake with the ship, which is getting too close to other battleships. Because once Pabita gets too close, one of the things that can happen is that the enemy battleships can now just angle you, and you only still have 406 millimeter guns. So if they angle you, it's tough, right? What the ship depends on a lot of times is being at such a distance and in such a sort of like place where nobody expects you to really be shooting at them. And yet, like, there comes your shells, right? Like, that's the kind of play style that this ship has. And it's incredibly good at that, by the way, because not a lot of people expect shells to be raining in on them at, like, 23 kilometers, right? Like, most people expect that distance to be reasonably safe, and then bang. <laughs> okay, so you'll see the enemy team has a Montana. Montana is pretty broadside, right? Like, you'll notice, the, this Montana is pretty broadside. I should, in a normal battleship, come out here and just, like, blap. And just wait till you see the um, kind of crazy close range dispersion. This ship is not designed for that, right? Like I repeat, not designed for close range battleship engagements. So there we go. Broadside Montana. I'm thinking, oh yeah, this is going to be, remember, inexperience at the time? I'm like, this is going to be great. Hmm. <laughs> and then you do remember this ship has that above water citadel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that Montana full broadside to me, well, haha, <laughs> I didn't do much to him, but him on the return salvo, ouch, ouch. I get a second salvo off. And, yeah. <laughs> Close range, not really Pavita's thing. Now, you can, of course, still get lucky enough. She does have a lot of penetration, so you could get lucky. You could get one of those random shells that go into citadels, so that can happen. Um, but it's just kind of random, right? Because you'll see on my third try, I think I get a... Is it this one? No. Oh, yeah, this one was a complete miss with the Ford uh, six guns. Here we go. You want to bring the rear turret in here. And there you go. I got, like, a little bit. You'll see, like, group of shells that were kind of nice. Bang. Okay. Nailed the Citadel, finally. But then, look at what I decide to engage after this. Because this Montana gets out of my line of fire. And then I'm like, hey, look, there's another Montana all the way down there. 20 kilometers. Think I'm going to engage him. And immediately you'll see, hey, that dispersion doesn't look so bad. <laughs> going to 20k, you know? But against the ship that was that close, it didn't really work. And, of course, I am going to pick up another Citadel there. And so that is taken care of. Currently sitting on 138,000 damage. This Montana is getting engaged by Stalingrad. This Montana should be going down. All right. So you can see the problem that I ran into with this game, right? When I was far away, that DM and everything, I was doing a wonderful job there, but oof, get close and not so hot. Habita is not the get close kind of battleship. She is really a long distance sniper. And it's a playstyle that I'm sort of really mixed about, to be honest, um, because technically you don't want backline camping battleships that's just like you don't really want that to be a part of your game um because that is really passive and you don't really help your team with anything else but at the same time the really good players with this ship will have a really tremendous influence because they'll get themselves into the right positions and then they'll hit things from such a range that like other enemy ships are not really ready for it you know so yeah kind of mixed thoughts about it i, I would say that maybe what wargaming can do to make it a little bit better. Oh, by the way, yeah, see, I told you. Suddenly, sometimes it'll do that, where you get close range, and then, boom, you double citadel something, and, you know, hey, shell sometimes works, sometimes, it's all terrible, right? It's like, it's just one of those things where it's like, eh, it kind of works sometimes, kind of doesn't work sometimes. It's just one of those kind of situations. Anyways, um, momentarily lost my train of thought. This is what happens when you make videos at four in the morning, after a long day of work, your brain doesn't function anymore. Oh, yeah, right. So, Maybe what they can do to the ship to still keep the sort of this unique aspect flavor of her is maybe to make her a little bit more vulnerable, uh, maybe make her more vulnerable to HE, so take away that like side 150 millimeter piece, make that 32. Um, maybe make the close range penalty a little bit worse. Uh, there's a lot of things I think that can potentially be done to, you know, maintain this play style maybe but like kind of take away some aspects of it 
Anyhow, I do get burned to death by this carrier, but that's okay. You know, almost 200,000 damage. So let's take a look at the final results screen, right? There's definitely some work that they're going to have to do to this particular ship to make her, let's say, better balanced. Um, but anyhow, 199k damage, 7 Citadel hits, you know, good credit gain, nice EXP gain, right? Free EXP gain, all really, really good. Um, you know, managed to sink myself two ships in this particular game, even shot down some planes. Top of the team in terms of EXP, 2,434 base experience, really good. Look at the damage and you'll see, yep, you know, all AP damage from long range. Even have not too terrible potential damage and credit earned. Well, once you take away the service costs and everything, even with premium account, still making money. Non-premium, making a little bit, not massive amounts. But yeah, it's a tier 10, right? Anyways, that's what I think about Pepita. You know, she, or I guess some places they still call her Slava, but Pepita, that's what she appears as in game. She's strong, you know, and especially for good players, incredibly strong. So I do expect to see her get maybe some kind of nerfs before she makes it out onto the live service. All right, folks, aside from that, take care of yourselves, have yourselves a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again really, really soon.